Good morning. Welcome to worship, whether you are here in the sanctuary or worshiping online this morning, it's good to be with you as we begin Daylight Savings Time. Um, uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, I think most of you know that Jamie's back in the office Tuesday through Friday and is getting uh, resettled and reorganized, so um, I'm very glad to have her back, and if you need anything, she's in the office Tuesday through Friday. Um, we have a meeting today. Staff Parish Relations Committee will meet right after worship in the meeting room. And that's all I have for this morning. Are there other announcements? Larry. Men's breakfast will be 7 o'clock next Saturday at the gate of our all-male RMA. Okay. <laughs> all right. Very good. And we have one more uh, thing to do before we start worship. Uh, oh, go ahead, Peter. So two days ago, they had her doing actual stairs in the facility, going up and down. They had her go, go up and down over 10 times and stuff. Uh, they have her now walking backwards, sideways, and all that stuff. And they put five-pound ankle weights on both of them to make her legs stronger and stuff. So she's moving right along and stuff. She just started swallowing ice or eating ice chips and swallowing water the other day. Great. So wonderful. Good news. Yeah. So last week we um, prayed over a prayer shawl for Madeline, and today we're going to pray over a prayer shawl for Chris and a lap robe for Peter. They're uh, staying close in the city and uh, are there to urge Madeline on, and so we want to uh, give these to them today. So if you'd pray with me. Gracious and loving God, again, we are so grateful for our knitting ministry and all those who knit so many items for people in need. We pray your special blessing upon this lap robe and this shawl today for Chris and Peter so that as they uh, walk alongside Madeline during this time of recovery, that they may feel our love and our prayers as well as your comfort and peace. It is so exciting that healing is progressing, but we also know it takes tons of energy and so much faith and patience. And so we pray that for Madeline and for Peter and Chris and their whole family. So may our prayers and energy go with these items so that Chris and Peter might feel them during these days and weeks ahead. Amen. So um, you can add your own prayers of intention. I'll pass, you can pass it along uh, through the congregation this morning. Any other announcements before we begin? All right. Then let us begin to center ourselves as we cross the threshold into this time and place. We continue our movement through the Lent season this week with another of letting go. This week we lament that so much in life is out of our control. This is frustrating to us, and so sometimes we have been tempted to believe the sayings that tell us if we just think positively, we can turn it around. Yet our experience tell this, tells us that this doesn't always work. Let us turn ladder climbing towards the expectation of a perfect life into garden tending nurturing what is and embracing our holy good enough lives
Let us pray together. Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you, sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life. Shelter us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and your peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. All right, it's time for the children's word. If Daniel wants to come forward, and Miss Diane's going to help me today. Okay. Oh. Daniel, how old are you going to be tomorrow? Nine. Let's sing happy birthday to Daniel. <laughs> Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Daniel. Happy birthday to you. Sorry, we didn't mean to embarrass you. But we love you. <laughs> We care about you, and we're glad we can celebrate that your birthday with you today. Um, so today, our message is about control. Do you know what control is? Not really. Well, when you're in the car with your mom and dad, they shift gears, right? There's reverse, there's drive, and that's the way we control a car. And if the car's working like it's supposed to, that will just happen. If you shift into reverse, it's going to go backwards. If you shift into drive, it's going to go forwards. Well, no. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, Pastor Jenny did not do a very good job this week. Or it could be my seeds were too old. Um, I did take them home, and I watered them, and I put them in a window. But maybe they weren't warm enough, or maybe they're just taking their time. Yeah, it could be it was colder near the window where I was trying to get sun. Maybe if I had them in the basement under some grow lights, they would have done what they were supposed to. I don't know. But Miss Diane has something she's going to tell us about. So I didn't have a whole lot of control over this. But <laughs> Well, I don't like bugs, and I don't like weeding. So I do my garden indoors all year round. And so last Sunday, I started one. Here's the little guy. Can you see him? So this is called an aero garden, and instead of having water, everything grows in, I'm sorry, instead of having soil, everything grows in water, in that little sponge, instead of soil. And so it gets water, and then it has this grow light that's on top of it. <laughs> is it dripping on you? I can put him back. And it has a little, little dome to keep it warm, and the light's very bright, so I didn't want it turned on during service. And it has a little water pump that pumps the water, and I have to pour nutrients, and it's very very um, self-explanatory for me because this light comes on when it's low on water and I put more water in there and the other light comes on when I need to add nutrients every two weeks. So I can kind of ignore it except when it runs out of water and just let it grow and it grows pretty fast. So. And is the water, so the light warms the plants, is the water heated too? No, nope, it's not heated so it stays in my house all year round. I have a, a front room, and I have some bigger ones. It is pretty cold. Yeah. yeah. So my boys don't like my front room. They call it my conservatory, because I have um, rows of plants in there. I have peppers and tomatoes and lettuce. We had strawberries for quite a while until I killed them all. <laughs> but, and, yeah. and why did that happen, do you think? Um, we got little spider mites, okay. and they really like to eat strawberries. So yeah, we didn't completely get rid of all the critters in the house, but because um, they must have come in through a window or something and got them in the summer. But, uh, so they ate them all. <laughs> but so, we did, we got a lot of strawberries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got about 200 strawberries off of them, so I, I was pretty happy with that. So Diane is able to grow a garden in her house and can pretty much, she doesn't have to do a whole lot, whereas... It's a con so we might call that a controlled environment, right? Because it gets its light all the time, it has its water and its food. This is a non <laughs> control. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, right. So I don't have a whole lot of control over this. I can do my best, but there'll be much more success over here with the controlled environment. And you know, farmers have to deal with an uncontrolled environment a lot. They, they're much more attentive than maybe I was this week to this seedling, but they fertilize on a regular schedule, they weed, but they also have to depend on the rain and the sun. And sometimes we get way more rain than we need. Sometimes we don't get enough rain. Where I grew up in Nebraska, people use irrigation so that they can help it out if, if we don't get enough rain. But farmers in Illinois, for the most part, rely on the weather because usually we get what we need. But sometimes it's totally out of our control. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, they could. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I want you to remember that sometimes we don't have control over things that happen in our lives. But God is with us anyway. Even though things may not go exactly how we want, even though my lettuce didn't grow this week, I'm going to... It was lettuce, but I'm going to try again. And um, you could put it by my grow light. I could put it by the grow light and see what happens. <laughs> but remember that Jesus is always with you, no matter what, even when things don't go quite like we want them to. All right. Yeah. Oh. Wow, yeah, yeah. Actually, if this started to grow a little bit, then I would put it in a bigger pot so it could grow bigger. But anyway, that's a lesson for another day. All right, so let's pray. If you can, can you repeat after me? Gracious God, sometimes we can't control things, but you are with us, walking beside us, and we are grateful. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I think Diane's going to leave the basil here. It's basil. She's going to plug it in is later. Dill, mint, basil, and a couple other things. I forgot what I put in there. Excellent. All right. So now I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, number 395 in the hymnal. Thank you. 
Even Jesus got dang frustrated when folks didn't behave as he would have liked. We probably aren't receiving death threats from Herod as Jesus was, but our well-being could be threatened by the idea that if we just try hard enough, are nice enough, and just say the right thing, life will always go our way. We run in so many different directions, trying to herd the chicks into some imagined semblance of perfect formation. What if we could let go of needing all things and all people to be just so, instead of to learn to dance the unfolding of that which is not ours to control? Let us take a moment of silent reflection. Hear this compassionate word from the psalmist. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the feeling alone and fixing what feels so oh so wrong with this world, inviting us to let go of the need to be God so that we might recognize that God is with us, offering courage in difficulty. And know that despite sometimes our faltering steps in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven, even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. This morning's reading comes from Luke 13, 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came in and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as hens, <clears throat> as hens gather their brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So most of you know that we have chickens at our place, and every year we lose some, either to illness or to predators. And of course, hens stop laying or lay fewer eggs as they get older. So you always have to keep adding to the flock to make sure that you get those eggs. So this week, we lo- we've lost about 10 chickens over the winter, so I ordered new chicks this week, and they're going to come in about a month, and I can't wait, because not only are they just so cute and so fuzzy, I think my maternal instinct kind of kicks in, and I just love taking care of them and having them cheeping um, in the house. They begin to develop a personality too, and so they're entertaining as well. And it's also uh, kind of fun to watch our dog uh, check them out all the time. The challenge is cleaning their tubs that we put them in at first because they're quick and they're hard to grab and get out of there. And it's really difficult to get, uh, get them back in. When they get a little bit older, we put them outside for part of the day when it's warm enough and let them get used to being outside and we fence them in um, a small area. But it's really difficult to get them back into their tub or their crate or whatever it is because they're so quick and they just run away. They've started to enjoy a little bit of freedom and they don't want to be caged. They don't quite realize yet that they really need protection. Well, our passage this morning speaks of Jesus as a mother hen and the people as his brood. 
This saying and lament in Luke by Jesus takes place on his way toward Jerusalem, the journey of which began back in chapter 9 of Luke. Now we're in chapter 13. Jesus knows what awaits him in Jerusalem. He is a prophet after all. And we hear the Pharisees warning him that Herod is out to get him. What the Pharisees do not point out, but what Jesus knows, is that not only Herod, but some of his very own people will become his critics and take action to have him tortured and crucified. Jesus is clear that his work is about to be completed. He's been casting out demons, he's been healing people, but that's going to end soon. Jesus knows that the Roman government, supported by many people who will gather in Jerusalem for Passover, will have him killed. So Jesus then goes on to point out the human propensity to fulfill society's expectations rather than God's, despite the fact that God continuously promises to take care of us. Like a hen protects its brood, Jesus will protect us. And just as the hen will sacrifice herself before she allows a predator to attack her chicks, Jesus will sacrifice himself for us. Jesus is trying to protect his brood, his people, from the likes of Herod. Herod, the local king who represented Caesar and ruled with the sword and with the support of an army and other Roman officers, as well as the tax collectors. The people of Judea living in poverty did not like Caesar. They did not like Herod. And yet Jesus doesn't promise to replace those officers and that government. Jesus offers his people hope and healing, but he would not become the political savior they wanted him to be. So therefore, like a mother hen, Jesus cannot completely control those of us who follow him because we're stubborn and we have been given the freedom to make our own choices. Jesus promises us salvation Jesus promises that his yoke will be easy and his burden light, unlike the political rulers of the world. And yet, people, we, keep running off, pulled by the trappings of security, the temptations of the newest bright and shiny thing, perhaps power and prestige, and a host of other things which can never truly fulfill us. And so that is why in this passage, Jesus then laments. Because God comes to earth in the form of a human being so that we would really see and understand the freedom of God's grace and the power of God's love. But we keep straying from the path. We're constantly trying to meet others' expectations to be all things to all people or to do what we think will satisfy our inner yearnings and desires. Instead of staying on the path that Jesus has taught us to follow, we get sidetracked and lured by the temptations of the world. We try to build the perfect life or the life that we think we should have. We follow the rules and complete the steps that are supposed to result in us getting a good job and finding a loving spouse, making a home, etc. But sometimes something happens to disrupt that plan for the life that we think we want or desire. A terminal illness or a recession, an injury or an infidelity, a job layoff or a tornado, a pandemic or a child born with special needs a death or drought, an invasion by a power-hungry leader that impacts the economy halfway around the world. Those events, which are completely out of our control, can knock us off the ladder or push us off the path. And that can be frustrating, it can be discouraging, and even devastating. 
Yet Jesus is always there continuing to gather us in, offering us a place of love and nurture. Jesus is present, letting us know that life is not perfect, but that he will never leave us. I think we can relate that so much in life is just out of our control. I spoke to someone the other day whose young daughter, she's in her late 20s or early 30s, had just gone through breast cancer, which included a double mastectomy, chemo, and radiation. So young, and something totally unexpected in a very healthy young woman who took really good care of herself. Enough, though, um, excuse me, and even though she's cancer-free at the moment, there's a greater chance that that cancer could recur later in life because she got cancer the first time at such a young age. Kate Bowler, one of the authors of the book Good Enough that our series is based on, was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at the age of 35. There's only a 14% chance of individuals with that diagnosis to survive. And typically, they only live for two years after that initial diagnosis. Kate had just given birth to her first child. She was at a great place in her career, a professor at Duke Divinity School. And yet, seven years later, she is still here. I think she probably has at the back of her mind wondering if that cancer will return. But at the moment, despite what was totally out of control, out of her control, she is here. Madeline Bram, 22 years old, has a brain bleed out of nowhere, but survives. And we know she was initially paralyzed on one side with doctors unsure that she would talk or see or hear at first. And yet it's only a month later and she is walking and talking, seeing and hearing, months ahead of where the medical professionals anticipated her to be. Now, not every story is like this, of course. Not every story has kind of the good ending or the positive trajectory, right? Some other stories would have those people not be in the good place they are right at the moment. And yet, we walk through those difficult times. The way we walk through those difficult times is something we can control. We may not be able to control the accident or the injury or the disease, but we can control how we respond. And sometimes that response leads to healing. We can think positively. We can surround ourselves with people who love and can cheer us on. We can remind ourselves that we are a beloved child of God who doesn't have to do anything to receive that love. We can ask others for what we need and not be ashamed for asking for help. We can be okay with what we can accomplish in the next hour or the next day and just keep telling ourselves this is good enough for now. Having Jesus as our mother hen, keeping us warm and continually reaching out with his wings can buoy us up and keep us going, even in those times that we experience things out of our control. We have a hen in our flock who is a brooder. Even though we don't have a rooster and don't anticipate any chicks, she just has this instinct to sit on the eggs. She pushes them around and sometimes you'll find four or more eggs underneath of her. And she will not move from that spot she has picked out to be the place where she broods. She is always in that corner and every morning I have to go out, I have to lift her up and collect the eggs. I put her back down and she just stays there. I don't know when she eats or drinks because she's always in that place when I see her. Even though we don't have a rooster and those eggs are never going to hatch, if they did, those chicks would be kept warm and safe for sure. 
she would try her best to protect them from any predator. Now, we don't always have control over the things that bring harm to us. But we can be assured that Jesus is like that mother hen and will do whatever he can to keep us warm, to provide us with love and nurture, to bring us under his wing in whatever situation we find ourselves, offering us comfort in the midst of the storms of life. And that sometimes is good enough. And in fact, I might even say that's more than good enough to know that Jesus, our Savior, is always putting those wings around us wherever we find ourselves. That is good news for us today. Amen. So our prayer time is a little different um, in this series. Diane's going to sing the verse of a hymn. Then I um, am going to talk a little bit. She'll sing the second verse, and then we'll go into our joys and concerns. or the process of being set apart or made holy is a theological concept that has been greatly debated over time. Are we made holy in a once and done kind of way? Or are we always simply moving in that direction based on our merits? It, as, it is as if once the debate is settled, then we can know what to do and control the outcome of goodness for ourselves. And yet, if we worry less about our own sanctification and worry more about treating the world, the planet, and all of creation, especially those who are suffering as holy and worthy of our love, then we will be acting on what we can control, sharing what we have with others. Let us sing together. Continue to pray for those um, that are on the screen and in your bulletin, for Madeline Bram, who's at Shirley Ryan, for Ray Meyer, Philip Termini, Pat Heinsen, Donna and Ty, Connie Taylor Nelson, Connie and Dennis, for Jan Thurlby, and for Al Thurlby. Al Thurlby, I think, is home, but we continue to lift him in prayer. God, in your mercy. Are there others that you would pray for or updates to those I've named that you would like to lift up or places or people or situations, joys or concerns?
It was a joy to you have breakfast with the women yesterday morning. I think there were 13 or 14 people there, and it, it was a good time. God, in your mercy. Any other joys or concerns this morning? All right, then let us pray and uh, join me in the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the sun that is shining, for this group of people that is our church family. We're grateful for new faces and new energy, for the opportunity to come together in ways that we haven't been able to do for a while. God, we are grateful for the healing that you continue to shower upon those on our prayer list for the improvements that they're experiencing. And if things are not moving quite as quickly as one might hope, we just pray for patience <clears throat> and that those individuals might feel your love and your care, that they might feel our prayers for them and the support that we offer. Help us to know how to reach out and to make their journey a little bit easier. God, we know that there's so much out of our control, and yet we know that we can always share your love, that we can always remember that you are with us, that your love is unconditional, and that we will make it through with your help and the help of our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, we especially pray this morning for the Ukraine, for all that's going on there. We just ask that you provide protection, that you would soften hearts, that you would help world leaders know how to intervene or respond in ways that will accomplish peace. We're grateful that we are living in a place of peace Help us to endure the hardships that we may feel knowing that we're not in the midst of war. It's happening afar and we pray for them, but we're also grateful for the life that we have at this time and in this place. <clears throat> we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is the second Sunday of the month, and uh, I think Lori has the mission moment. Our missions for this month are the food pantry and keep Northern Illinois beautiful. So Lori and Claire will let us know a little bit about these ministries this morning. Our local mission is the food pantry. And um, with all the prices going up, I kind of anticipate that they're going to be in need of uh, some replenishing. So either in uh, dry goods, canned goods, and uh, of course money would be very welcomed. Also, I'll bring up UMCOR again with uh, what's going on in the world and all the refugees. Um, the other country, surrounding countries of Ukraine are really taxed with being able to provide. So um, please keep UMCOR in your thoughts and prayers that they are there, they are helping others. And uh, it happens that um, our special Sunday for UMCOR is March 27th. Thank you. Well, 
Well, these two missions are both places where I spend a lot of time. Um, la as far as the food pantry goes, I want to say thank you to everyone who donated to the Hiawatha food drive. Um, the, they delivered a large uh, donation of canned goods and, and uh, non-perishable foods of all kinds last week, so we're very grateful for that. Um, Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful is an organization based in Rockford um, that has, they operate two recycling centers, one's up in McChesney Park, the other one's on the south side of Rockford, so it's easy to get to from here. Um, and they collect um, you know, all kinds of household recycling, paper, plastic, glass, uh, as well as electronics and um, uh, metals and um, they'll also take uh, clothing. Um, as long as it's clean and dry, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't matter if it's torn or um, stained or whatever, it can be recycled. If it is still good, then um, Goodwill uh, will either sell it or give it to someone else that can use it. But if it's not wearable, um, then it gets recycled. Uh, the recycling center in Rockford is open Tuesday afternoon from two to five and Saturday morning from 9 to noon. Um, so they're always looking for volunteers. It's a real easy place to volunteer. If you're interested, I can um, tell you about that. Um, but I will also mention those of us who live within the village of Kirkland have curbside recycling from waste management for uh, hazardous waste and electronics. Um, but if you're outside the village, um, Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful is certainly a place you can um, use to get rid of uh, the things you don't need in a responsible manner. So thanks. Thank you. So it is now time for our offering. If our ushers would come forward and if you want to make a gift to any of those places, just be sure to mark your envelope or your check um, <clears throat> with that notation. Answered prayers. I have trouble I wish wasn't there. And I have asked a thousand ways that you would take my pain away. That you would take my pain away. I'm trying to understand how to walk this weary land. Make straight the path their crooked lie Oh Lord before these feet of mine Oh Lord before these feet of mine When my world is shaking Heaven stands When my heart is breaking I never leave your hands When you walked upon the earth, you healed the broken, lost, and hurt. I know you hate to see me cry. One day you will set all things right. Yeah, one day you will set all things right. When my world is shaking, heaven stands. When my heart is breaking,
generous God, in your light of extravagant blessings, no matter what the state of the world, of our imperfect lives, we offer our gifts and ourselves, and know that you transform what we plant in the produce of love. Amen. Amen. Closing him today, since the Lord is my salvation. blessing for when you realize everyone is struggling. Blessed are you who see things clearly, where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers. Superpowers of ever-widening empathy and courage that gets you back up after another fall, and a deepened awe at the beauty and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Life flowers, like flowers that grow from the cracks in the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you, and thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company and will never walk alone. So now may the God of all creation, especially when it's painful, and Jesus, who is our companion along in this crooked path called life, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. God is still here.